Okay. All right. Thank you. Now I can. All right. We're called to order. Um, first item on the agenda is citizen comments. Um, do we have any comments on it? Frankly, it's not on the agenda. <laughs> Talk about the town meeting, town uh, report, no, dedication. Uh, having a uh, meet and greet for the town meeting. Yeah. Okay. So um, I think we should. When the new captain and town manager starts February first, we should have a meet and greet some evening between five and seven, so the public can come in and meet the new town manager. Yep, and uh, we we're definitely happy to schedule that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he's going to be here. He's we have a Tuesday meeting, so yes, yeah. We can do it then. Find out what his schedule is like. Yep. Uh, do I have no additions to the posted agenda, and I don't think there's any deletions. Tom, do you uh, want to give us the manager's report? Yeah, I don't have a whole lot to report. Uh, we uh, made a verbal offer and have a verbal uh, um, acceptance for a greater operator. Um, so we're pretty pleased about that. Right. Yeah. The young man that has experience at it Ooh. and likes to do it. So young um, man? Yeah. Good. Yeah. And Ray, I got you what you asked oh. for. This is okay. a salary survey that uh have it electronically too. Uh no. They didn't send it electronically? They said they would. Oh, they did? On on the uh when you buy it, yeah. Mm. I'll have to check check that out. But anyways, that's uh, what you asked for. Uh, cost the town a hundred bucks. So well spent. When you when you're done with it, uh, please return. Yeah, no. Um, there's no. I, when I looked at it, they, they said they would send one hard copy, electronic copy also. Oh, I have to go back to them and ask them for the electronic one. Yeah, because you can keep this here. I, I can wait for the electronic copy. But uh. Yeah, I don't know what, what form. Okay. Then for the uh, manager report, Tom. That's it. Sorry. Right, great. No, no problem. Um, so next item is the town report uh, cover discussion and dedication. I need to report. Was there anything significant in the, in the finances to report this month? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I thought you'd moved on to new business. Uh, you know, um, I know what you guys, uh, if you'd have much time to delve into this, uh, but I did. And um, honestly, we're doing better than I thought we would be. Um, you know, a lot of areas that we thought by this time, we'd be looking at uh, over expenditures. We're not. So, uh, you know, and this report is like about 53% of the year. Right. So it's, uh, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty excited about it. Do you have any questions now or later? Give me a shout. So for the dedication, there was two different suggestions, both I think are excellent suggestions of uh, Leanne Tapley and um, Butch Sutherland, but. Oh, Butch, Butch Sutherland has, we did. We did him? Yes. Um, the year that he, um, I, the village report when he was um, leaving the fire department. And, um, but I don't, I don't have any qualms about doing it again. Right. Yes. And Leanne Tapley is wonderful. With her um, being an active field hockey coach and active in the Do It Like Dan yeah, for like ALS Dan, research, yeah. which is really wonderful. Um, so. I think she'd be a great choice. Yes. What do you guys think? I think Leanne's a great choice. Yeah. 
<laughs> it looks like a positive response to it. <laughs> uh, um, so I think if there's, is there any comments from anyone else in the public? But if if not, I think uh, we have a, a working nomination of Leanne. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, that's great. I, I don't think we need a motion. I think we have a general consensus. We can do that. Um, <clears throat> for the cover, for the cover, um, a, um, we had some videos and photos when there was an ice jam by Lincoln Covered Bridge. Oh, yeah. Um, in the spring, I can go through and see if I can find something of the Lincoln Covered, covered Bridge with the ice jam. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. There's um one unfinished business that from last year. The um the portrait of John Dalton mm. didn't get didn't get done. Well, it's gotten done now, but um I when I was in the stroke they um Adrian did the, mm -hmm. and we didn't, um, he didn't do anything. And about a month ago, he said me that he has the, the thing and I, we should have a presentation to oh, John. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. That sounds I'll, great. Yes. Thank you. Although he's got to, he won't have, have to be the plow driver. Yeah. <laughs> so for the next item being the town meeting discussion, um, I think if we do it like last year, where we're in person, we can be down, you know, downstairs in the auditorium. We had the Zoom on for viewership, but participation was from the floor, as I recall. Yeah. Does that sound right? Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so I'm fine with following that format again. If, but what is? There's um, a chance that they're going to do it um, as is as it was. Um, Charlie has some information, but there's no um, definite. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's- You mean all in person? Um, with no Zoom link? That's, yeah, that's yeah. what they're talking about, but okay. they haven't made up their mind yet. Yes. I, I read right. that, yeah. Yes. <laughs> so I guess if they haven't made up their mind, I would like to plan for the contingency of having the Zoom link, but participation being from the floor. Great, yeah. thank you. Is that good with you, Susan and Carrie? Sorry. Uh, you guys froze for a minute, so yeah, oh, I didn't hear that. We're waiting on, um, I guess there's some discussion at the state level as to if town meetings should be only in person, but that's still outstanding. So I think we're going to plan for having a Zoom link, but participation be from the floor, not from online. As long as we're in line with what the state's yeah. suggesting, it's fine yep. with me. I no, think that's fine. So, yes, that's good. Okay. So, we'll kind of go with that. It did they, yeah, okay. Okay. Uh, so, next item is the EDC funding for proposal for child care. Should we? Yeah. Yes. Sure. Yes. <clears throat> so, out of your way. So you have the materials that we sent. Um, I just want to um, kind of summarize them and put them in context. Um, there are three members here of the working group that focused on child care. Todd led the group, Larry, um, myself, and Mika Seely was the fourth member. Um, and the child care is one of our five priorities, increasing child care capacity, 
uh, increasing housing supply for the workforce, marketing Woodstock, um, develop, uh, rejuvenating downtown and supporting events. Um, and we agreed about a year ago, and we talked to you about this, and we had community input and so forth, that the community wanted and we wanted to do fewer things, which is why we picked those five priorities, and we wanted to do bigger things. This is the first of those proposals that represents the complete implementation of that idea. This is a $330,000 program to create about 75 additional childcare spaces split between uh, a three, uh, three months to, no, six weeks to three years childcare and then after school programs. And it's for, for four existing providers, four of the five existing providers, uh, Woodstock Christian, Rainbow, the community campus, and the new facility in Bridgewater. Um, and uh, we worked, we had a very open process. We had three, a series of three open meetings. We conducted two surveys. We met with Let's Grow Kids, which is the state organization that's trying to build childcare. We met more individually with each of the providers. Um, well, I should say that one childcare provider decided not to propose an expansion. Um, that was Woodstock Nursery. Yes, that's correct. Um, but all the others did. We worked with them to develop their proposals. The requirement of the proposal was that they demonstrate that the funding that we would give them would get them to a sustainable point. Point. In other words, they wouldn't. They didn't. They couldn't invest and take the risk themselves of, of building a new facility or hiring more teachers or increasing wages, whatever their different challenges were. But if they were given funding to do that the extra revenue that they would get from the additional children would then cover their costs on an ongoing basis. So our hope, and I have to say that, you know, you never know if you forecast these things, mm -hmm. but our hope, our plan is, and their plan is, that this is a one-time investment that will create permanent capacity that will fund itself over time. This, um, there's a summary page, and I'm sorry. I, I, I interject for one yeah, thing. So one, one interesting thing about how this funding works is that when you increase the child care, let's say year one is 2023 by 80 slots, which is a, a lot of working families in Woodstock and beyond. It's, it's ad infinitum, it's a compounding thing because they've, we've given them money, they've hired the teachers or gotten the supplies or whatnot, 80 new children can come, let's say, and they, they come next year, they come the year after. And that, that, that money we spent in year one continues to compound through. So it's a very interesting way to set up like that. The, the, uh, just very quickly, the, on the, there's a summary page, and I'm sorry, um, I, I have it on a USB stick. I thought that there was going to be someone here, but let me, I could just briefly, the, the four providers who are adding these 75 to 80 spots is Rainbow, um, WC, Woodstock Christian Community Child Care, the Community Campus, and Bridgewater. Each of them has slightly different needs, and so they developed individual proposals. For Rainbow, we're proposing, they, they're, we're going to, We've approved or, or recommended, I suppose, a grant of $140,000. This is to cover a significant ramp up period and increase in salaries for their workers and salaries and healthcare. and healthcare benefits in order to be able to retain retain people and add, I think, five extra teachers. I yeah. Think what it is. And just, just interject there what Rainbow is accomplishing is the youngest of the people. So six weeks through three years, which takes an incredible amount of licensing. And so that's new folks moving that want to start a family into Woodstock. They can go and get this childcare that otherwise isn't available. And it keeps people in the workforce, not splitting a family into having a mom or dad or otherwise partner stay home. So there's a great economic benefit to this. Specifically, Rainbow is the youngest generation. Yeah. The second part is an older generation, which is equally as important, which John will talk about. Yeah. The other, the other group that's tackling the youngest, the under threes, is Bridgewater. Their need is for construction costs. And so there we're giving them 100,000, we're recommending a $100,000 grant, which will allow them to construct a new facility in the existing Bridgewater building. They have to build it out, it's expensive. There's, there's equipment, there's, there, there's, there's the physical build out. There are a lot of regulations and so forth. And there's also, um, so basically they're adding a new classroom. They have the staffing to be able to And do. Bridgewater might as well be called Woodstock because the majority of the families work or live in Woodstock. And, and the majority of the way we were concerned about whether or not to give funding to a non-Woodstock based organization. I mean, they're only, I don't know, 250 yards over the line, but something like 75% roughly of the current people 
and about 75% of the waiting list are from Woodstock. Yeah. And so it's fundamentally. And that's the right, the Bridgewater School. That, yeah, that's the Bridgewater the Town Hall. Yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah. right over the way on the right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, WC, so that's also the youngest group. Uh, WCCC and the community campus are offering after school programs. WCCC, like Bridgewater, needs the funds to build out physically the facility. They've been borrowing space from the church and borrowing furniture from the church. That's a temporary measure. They've already expanded to some extent. They need to buy that for themselves and are, and that would be a $30,000 grant, sorry, a $60,000 grant for that equipment. And then the community campus, which is above Rainbow and is also doing after school programs. Older children, but, but you know, the second tier of children. Five to 12, age five yeah. to 12. Mm -hmm. They need, they are prepared to expand on their own. It's a complicated need they have. They need, and we've given, we've recommended a $30,000 grant for them to give them a financial cushion mm -hmm. so that because they have a very volatile they offer much shorter engagements for the kids. You can sign up for like three weeks or four weeks. And it's very hard for them to predict the long term, short term, what their volume and therefore their revenue is going to be. The need is there, but they allow people flexibility that other facilities don't. So when you go and look at their business model, it's a sort of a scary proposition to try to build it. But at the end of the day, what we're seeing is that there's there's still, even with all this money, there's capacity that generated and we can fill and they they fit that need in the older kids in a unique way but again like when you look at just their business as a whole it's a lot like this because that's what they strive for they strive for flexibility for parents and so they're afraid to expand on their own they are so so the total of that is three hundred and thirty thousand. um again as i said we expect them not to have to come back for more capacity um it's all of the benefits you know i mean Everyone knows the problems with child care, people not moving here and moving away because they can't find it. When we did a survey, by the way, it confirmed there are a number of families who say that, that one of the two parents is not working because of a lack of child care. And, and a multitude of families in year, the, we've just been in this for over seven months, we're going to leave Woodstock because this was something they couldn't surpass. And just being on the school board, I can tell you it's, it's about 21,000 in equalized pupil. So when we bring these children into the system, we can look at a $21,000 compounded brought into the school system of, of the WCUSD for each child. Anyway, so that's one last thing I'll say is that because of the scale of these grants, we are implementing a more rigorous oversight program. So we're having, we have signed, we have signed agreements with all of our grantees, but we're sitting down with the boards of, of or the a board member of each of the organizations and the executive director to sign the agreement and discuss exactly what the terms are. And we have regular reviews now for when they request reimbursement. From a financial point of view, the EDC has the funds to cover this. We have about, this will use up three quarters of our reserves. Um, we will have about $100,000 left over. Um, we have committed up to $100,000 to the community grant program, which will make those recommendations on Saturday. So we'll come to you in a couple of weeks with those. Um, and that would take the remaining of our reserves. That doesn't include any revenue then for this year. So we expect to get about, if, if it's the same as last year, if we don't have a recession, it would be about 300, we're up to about $370,000 of revenue. I will say though, that this program of fewer, bigger grants is going, you're gonna see this again. And in the next few months, we expect very large grants, not 330,000, but six figure grant requests for marketing and for housing. Um, and so we are getting to the point, which is a good place to get to, where we're spending the money on a few small things, all of which are in our priority areas. And I think just quickly, I think that there's there's some famous blogger, Instagram type people in this wonderful place, Woodstock, right? And they talk about childcare issues. And wouldn't it be amazing uh, with a program like this, where an EDC in Vermont can go and push this forward the town, we're really a leader. And wouldn't it be amazing to see not only these kids get to have a place to go, and get the care they deserve for working families to be able to go and have two jobs in the household if they so choose and whatnot. But wouldn't it be amazing to be a leader in this? And I think it's just, in terms of economic value, just looking at not just like the school 21,000 or this and that, but just 
the idea that when you have a child that you want to plan a family and you have a child, you know, there's a place on the go in your community, like the stress and burden that can be relieved and the, the amount of positivity in the home that can be put forth. I just am really excited. I'd like to thank John and Mika and everyone, whether you vote yay or nay here, I hope yay. I'd like to thank them for this. This has been work that really is what we signed up for. It's about building this space and allowing people to move here and expand their roots and, and build that. And I'm just really excited about it. So I hope that you'll consider it in a positive way. Are these year round or are these during the school program or like our school year, are these like mix? Uh, it's most, uh, well, let's see. Um, it, the, the, I think all of them operate year round. Well, yeah, the after school, yeah. I'm not I mean, sure. I know like Rainbow uh, pretty much does. But. Yeah, so it's a, the different people do it. So like WCC is really pushing the summer thing. Yeah. And, and Rainbow has, because there's a little kid, it's a little different. But then TCC is pushing, hey, if you have a six-year-old and a 12-year-old, come here and hang out for two hours and your parents can go have dinner and still be in love. It's like, this is the, they're all working together. And it's interesting. We talked about a provider that didn't want to expand earlier. And at first, like you guys all know me and I was like, ridiculous. But at the end of the day, I see a very complex business. It's, it's a lot of work. And these people are heroes. Every single one of them that's working for our families and our loved ones to try to have the care they need. So they've really all tried to satisfy their own business niche in a way. And we're lucky enough to have five providers of which four enough are working in this program. It's just, it's just really fantastic stuff. And think about upwards of 80 children, what that can do for the town. It's, it's amazing. Me. And I think it's good that a lot of this is year round because jobs are year round. The jobs are year round. The need for child care is year round. Yeah. I think the capacity, especially with, with two of these, play, well, it, all of them, I think really they're going to have the financial wherewithal to meet the demand. It's a chicken and they, they don't have a, it's a chicken and they're egg. Not, it's not an entrepreneur coming in and be like, I'm going to make a lot of money off child care, right? It's a, it's a very rough, rough upstart for them. And I think that at the end of the day, what John was alluding to is that. We're really giving them this buffer uh, to be comfortable and to be moving. But the, but the fact is, if you hire another teacher, you get X amount of students. There's a simple revenue, income, and expense formula to that. And they've shown, all of them have shown uh, that we put here forth that they can do that sustainably. And I definitely had a concern initially about funding something in Bridgewater, but if I, I, I do if because board, oh, that just orders. opens up a whole new can of worms. Yeah, we talked about it like this. Well, wait a minute. Let me so if a restaurant, let's say Romanto's or uh, Shackleton decides that they want to expand, they're in Bridgewater. Right. And, I have and this concern is, too, <laughs> Ray, and I've talked through, I talked through it with a couple school board members and some different members of the community, community tonight before the meeting. And I really think the difference is that childcare is a critical need for this community. And so comparing it to a restaurant is a little bit arbitrary since a restaurant is it's Something it's still not, not it, it's it's Woodstock funds going outside of Woodstock and to satisfy a, a critical need for so Woodstock. Wait, wait, wait. That's not the mission of the EDC. If you look at the mission of the EDC, it says for the town of Woodstock. Well, hold on. I think it is satisfying a critical need for the town of Woodstock. Yeah, I think that the the impact of this grant will be to generate economic development for the town of Woodstock. <laughs> The, now, but the other thing that convinced, so so that's the first thing is I think our purpose is to develop, you know, is to like, you know, if we were to buy a truck that was made in Detroit and brought it to Woodstock, I mean, I know it's not exactly the same, but we were, sorry, look, we were also very concerned about this. We, we had these discussions. So there were two things that convinced me at least to recommend this. The first is, as I've said, that the economic, when they showed us that 75% of the students and 75% of the waiting list are from Woodstock. That what this is going to do is primarily the primary effect of this is to create childcare capacity for Woodstock. It's it's pretty straightforward. But the second thing that they said was, you know, is that is that Bridgewater childcare needed more than one hundred and forty thousand dollars to provide childcare to the kids that they're providing currently. They spent one point four million dollars to fix the building up and to and to um, and to make it habitable for, for not just for child care, but including for the child care. Senior Wood, center and what? Yeah. Woodstock didn't pay a penny for that, but 75% of the people are using those spaces. And so we could, 
basically, you know, and, and it's not Bridgewater's responsibility to pay funds for things that, to let Woodstock people use it. So yeah, but the, I, I could have a tit for tat. You know, the flip side is how many of these other daycare, I'm going to just play devil's advocate. Yeah. How many of these other daycare centers take people from outside of Woodstock? They, they, they do take them, but, mo but most of the yeah, but most of the, of the participants, I think. I, I, well, I mean, Bruce on here, Chris Ruth. Yeah, I think I think a good way to look at it. I, I thought about it because we we struggled this in the in the actual working group and then brought it to the EDC and public debate before coming to you. And and we I str I personally struggle with this. I said, why will we spend money when it's outside of our town borders? But we had an analogy that worked for me, and perhaps it might work for you all is let's say the power plant for Woodstock happen to be located in Bridgewater. The power plant is a key infrastructure for Woodstock. We cannot survive without it. We can't survive without childcare. People are moving away. So I said, okay, if Woodstock knew with all of our, 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 our tax base and the folks here and the people not to Bridgewater to Woodstock, if the power plant needed urgent repairs, which I think if you look out, you see child care is a need of urgent repairs beyond what we can do as a municipality, but they need urgent repairs. I said, okay, if you're talking about putting amount of money in to fix the power plant so that all of Woodstock can enjoy it, other towns may enjoy it also. This is true. They'll get the benefit of that new transformer or whatnot. But by going in Woodstock, being capable of going and increasing that power capacity, knowing that a high percentage historically has gone to our community directly. That's sort of how I fell into it, feeling like this is critical infrastructure, the childcare, because what it does is again, every child is 21,000 into the school district. Mm -hmm. Every parent that's working is someone that's open at Santi to service our drink or do this or that. And there's this trickle down effect in that way. Tom, did you want to say something? Yeah. It's... Oh, I just got uh, Roger Logan on the yeah. board. Um, and then I just Ruth after Roger. that, if Ruth could answer Ray's question yeah. about people. absolutely, Roger. Um, yeah, I just wanted to say I appreciate Ray's concern about about having some benefits for people who are outside of Woodstock. Um, but I think on balance, this is a tremendous win for this town. Um, it's truly an innovative approach, and I think. I think the EDC and especially the members of this committee should really be proud of of where they've gone ended up with this and I think it's it's not the worst thing in the world that that a town that's right next to us also benefits somewhat from this because we also benefit somewhat from all the work they've done on the building so I think this is a win-win situation for everybody involved I think we'd be insane not to go with it Thanks. Thank you. And uh, yeah, Ruth, 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 Ruth is the head of W. Woodstock Christian. Susan okay. has her hand up too. Hello. <laughs> so the question was about percentages. And um, what I can tell you is we start and about 84 of the children who were on the wait list and who have been admitted are Woodstock residents or from families who work in a business in the town of Woodstock. So it's a, um, while we have a small percentage who are always from surrounding towns, it's a majority of Woodstock residents that are benefiting and having their children in our programs. I know that from the presentations that were listened to about the other projects that they have similar numbers. It's, there's always a bit of a mix but the priority and the, the number of children who are in the majority are definitely from Woodstock. Thank you. And Susan has her hand up and Carrie mentions, I think someone else has their hand up. That I don't um, see. Yeah, my, my question was you had, um, you referenced agreements that you have with each of the uh, child care providers, and I was wondering if, with Bridgewater in particular, if there's anything about trying to maintain a percentage of Woodstock children. We talked with them. So first of all, just to, to clarify, we don't have agreements. We will have a standard agreement it's, it, uh, uh, with each of the providers. It just basically says this is what, you know, you're only allowed to use the money for the purposes that you asked for. It's a standard agreement, but 
we're going to meet. We don't. We're going to, we're just going to meet with the senior leadership of each place and go through it personally, rather than just send it by email and have someone unknown sign it. With respect to Bridgewater, we did talk to them about that. They felt that it was a very difficult operationally for them to uh, to do it. And they showed us the waiting list, basically, or they gave us the statistics on the waiting list. And we felt as a result that it wasn't you know, it wasn't necessary to, it was onerous operationally for them and for us to sort of try to monitor it. We couldn't really take the money back because in Bridgewater's case, it's for a physical facility. They're building something, they can't unbuild it. Um, so yeah, so so we we did start out that route, but and then, but that was when they brought up the fact that, you know, they've spent a lot of money on, on Woodstocks, but, but that is benefiting Woodstock. And, you know, we, we sort of didn't, I think, well, I'll just speak for myself, we didn't sort of see it that productive to get into a kind of a tit for tat. It was everyone would lose. Right. So, yeah, I believe they spent they they put in a seven figure investment with their own town raised monies. Um, so, when looking at a ten percent or less investment from Woodstock to have expansion, um, you know, it's a great deal for us as a town. It, it just in terms of you're just looking at it from a business perspective, um, and they their waiting list is so heavily on Woodstock. Um, that that again, I agree with John. It was an operationally onerous task to sort of move forward with any requirements in that way because again, it, it's just Woodstock, 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 which Carrie mentioned from WCCC. It's we're the vast majority of the of the supply. And so that 1.4 is was into like the existing facility and structure. That's so that the there's a like addition or whatever the project is is in a viable building and right it was the, the 1.4 million was, was not have nothing to do with this it was before this it yes. was just the building was i guess right. uninhabitable now it's up that was kind of like we've got a senior center child care they have a lot of things they they know that it's known i'm sure you wouldn't have got this far if you didn't know but just asking to make sure that if the money's being spent on construction that the area where it's going into is also Stable oh, going yes. forward. Oh yeah, yeah, like yeah. yeah. No, 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 it is. Yeah, yeah building is now in good shape. Like, I'm sure yes. you would come without yeah. having done that, right. but I want to ask. It looks like it looks like the police station. It's yeah. beautiful. <laughs> Mary, you had a um, so just there. Um, there the children that are Woodstock people that went to Bridgewater. They're Woodstock employees. And yes. Okay. Residents or employees, yes. yes. What yes. happened was we were thinking about Woodstock residents and folks came to us in our public meetings and said, well, what about all the people who work in Woodstock? Yes. And we said, that that makes perfect sense. I don't know why we didn't think about that. We need to incorporate that into this. And that's that sort good. of opened our eyes to it. That's, that's great. So, Joe, yeah. um, there's no doubt that the Bridgewater facility is a good investment. It's and and justified to to do this um i'm just concerned if it's legal for woodstock tax dollars to be invested outside the town and i think before you guys agree to that i would consult with uh, a good municipal attorney we could start with vlct and see if, if they have any uh opinion on that it seems to me that I've heard situations of this in the past and um, and there were issues and there could be some folks that you know, just don't agree that that should happen, no matter how justified and how beneficial it is for residents of Woodstock, it's still another town. Well, I, I guess a couple of couple of quick responses. First, absolutely. I, I've, we definitely should investigate that. I mean, obviously don't want to do anything that's not legal. Um, so we will follow up with that. Um, uh, um, that's right. You guys, you work with Stitzel Page and we, we have worked with them. Uh, yeah. And, but we'll find from VLCT, we'll figure out if they're the right, yeah. maybe that Larry might know that. But anyway, we will, the town has recommended attorneys to us on other, on other mm -hmm. related things. Yep. So we'll definitely follow up with that. We can do that that quickly. I suspect that it isn't illegal because other towns, for example, pay Woodstock for their ambulance service, mm. which I think is exactly the same thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, uh, the town actually pays the village for their police service. 
yeah. I think the same arguments could hold. Yeah. But uh, nevertheless, there's, there's a government paying another government. Yeah. There's no harm. Private. There's no harm to. The, yeah. There's no it's harm. A great to, idea. It's it's not, there's no harm to check. So yeah. we yeah. definitely should check. And if it's not, that's not allowed. Um, I will say that I, I think because we all had the same reaction, and Ray is asking the question, Carrie is you know, yeah. expressing concern. Uh, there certainly, I think, will be people who will who do perhaps or will object to it. Yeah. I would say for those people, and and however you obviously have to vote, you know, your country, you vote whatever you think is right. If we don't approve it, I do think that the families who then don't have childcare, because we're pretty sure that the demand is they have Bridge, Bridgewater is 24 spaces. Um, you, you, I think you would be obligated to, or you should expect to have to answer their question as to why, if we could have childcare, can't we have it? Because we can't find another way. There's not another provider. If, it, if it's a legal it. issue. Oh, well, if it's a legal issue, we're not going to do it, obviously. Oh, yeah. No, of course. I mean, we're not That's the answer. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I would say, presuming it's legal, one of the helpful ways that I um, thought about it in conversations with others is thinking about it as this nexus of need. So even if we approve the three that are in Woodstock and expand their capacity, it's still insufficient for all the children who need care in Woodstock. Um, you know, this is this is a this is a clear benefit, and it answers it answers a need. I, 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 I feel uh, Proctor also has his hand up. So who does? Patrick Proctor. Well, we yeah, are, am, am I being called on or? I, yeah, you're not on our board, but um, if you have a question or comment, go ahead. I, well, I, I just wanted to say, I, I, so I'm the treasurer for um, Rainbow Play School. And I also just did want to mention that um, it's absolutely correct that this uh, relationship goes both ways. You know, we definitely provide care for people who are parents who work in Woodstock and are part of the Woodstock community and are contributing to businesses that help generate EDC funds. And I think we all know that equal to the um, childcare crisis is also just the labor shortages that are occurring. So I think that um, if we can enable you know, kind of a, a people in the area to be able to go to their jobs and do the work they need to do, whether that be a Bridgewater parent coming to Woodstock or a Woodstock parent going to Bridgewater, you know, these things are not static. Everyone in the area is not having childcare in the exact same place where they work. So I think it's it's definitely something that um, is not only, you know, provable, but it's it's currently true that these trends are already going on. And so I just wanted to, you know, kind of validate that and point out that it is, it, it, this is a phenomenon that's already occurring. So it kind of has the potential of, providing to the workforce in the sense that what would be a stay-at-home parent might be might be a working parent looking for a position or someone who's moving to who's considering moving to Woodstock who decides not to move because they can't find childcare. I'm going to make a motion. Be, before, before you make a motion, sorry, I feel obligated to give you a piece of information which which may delay a decision on this. Um, at the time that we made these decisions, uh, there wasn't any other known alternatives. Todd said there were four local providers, four Woodstock providers. I mean, again, Bridgewater is local, right? Especially this end of Bridgewater. But the, um, we spoke with all of them. Four of them said that they could expand and gave us very credible proposals. Since then, there has there is another initiative in town that's in Woodstock, a group of people who want to start up a childcare facility. They are at an earlier stage. They have not applied for a grant. They've they've given us an indication that they would. I don't know how many kids it's going to be. I don't know what age group, but there is potentially another group that would would start up childcare. There's have 250 implications. Uh, yeah, they, I, it's, it's, it's not a year away. Well, sorry, I don't know. It's not two or three years away. They have implications. But, but it's a serious, it, it's, it's starting up. It's, they're investigating, they're looking at real estate, they, they're looking at people to hire and so forth. So there is, uh, there is another, at the, again, there might be another option for expanded capacity. We don't know whether or not 
we, we're not certain that this will fully meet the demand. It's a little bit hard to tell what the demand is. Well, I, I just to interject there for a moment. If you go to any provider, and this could this could be wrong because you can't go to a provider and say, I've been doing this for seven months. You can't say, give me your list and look at the overlap, right? Because they're running a business and they have their own. But what you can say is when you go to every one of them and you say, are you sure you can fill? They all laugh at you. And they say, there is such a demand here not just because of people like me that pulled roots here in the pandemic, but people that are looking for a better quality life and these things, but they have to have two jobs here. And so supposedly there's a giant demand of which I think we're meeting a lot, but it's still not enough as John alluded to. So if this other facility comes online, that would be the best thing. But I think that the way that we're looking forward to awarding the monies and the oversight which is important is that we're not giving Rainbow $140,000 tomorrow. We're saying you hire this teacher, there's these amount of pupils that come in, and then you get to the next step. And then you get, it's a laddered system. Yeah, no, right. But but I don't think they're worried. I don't think they're concerned no. that no, we'll lose control of it. I think there's yeah. a basic philosophical question about Bridgewater. My yeah. point is, I don't want to stand here and say we would be not meeting the need if we didn't have Bridgewater right. as an option. But, and I what I'm saying though is I- There might be another option. There might be another option. And down I, the line. Down, down the line, correct. Not so, the one now. I'll make a motion to approve- Bridgewater would start Chris. Rainbow Day School, WCC and the community campus um, for the EDC grants. And wait till we get a legal opinion before we approve Bridgewater. Okay, so the motion is to approve the Rainbow Woodstock Christian Community Care and the Community Campus now um, and pending Bridgewater Child Care on um, answer to the legal question. Yeah. Is, there is, is that what you said, Ray? Is that what you said? Yes. So, so you're you're happy to approve Bridgewater as long as it's legal. No, I said wait and wait for the legal question. But it, but if it is, the assumption is it would be approved. Well, I don't know. I'm not. Well, I'm not saying what I, I would. Think, I, I, right I think that I think that your motion and what Joe said were slightly different. No, no, I said approve the first three, and wait until we find out from Bridge if the Bridgewater giving money to Bridgewater is legal, and then we would vote on it. I'm not voting on Bridgewater tonight. Table Bridgewater is what you're saying. Basically, yes. Okay, so that's, that's the motion. Um, is there a second or is there a... I'll second. Okay. So the motion been made and seconded. Is there any discussion um, before we go to vote among this light board about um, <clears throat> about the motion or about an alternate motion? Well, then if if the um, Bridgewater is Proved mm. that. Then they come back to us and, and tell us that. So if, if, it would be that if the legal, if they if if the they can do the, that. Yeah, if the advice from the attorney is that it's legal to do Bridgewater, we would come back and discuss and vote on Bridgewater as its own separate motion. Okay. Under under Ray's motion. Um, so is there any comments from Carrie or Susan before we go to vote? Um, I mean, I'm, I'm in support of approving Bridgewater funding as well. Um, and I would prefer a motion that said we would, we would go ahead and improve it if, if it, if indeed it is a legal thing that we can do without them having to come back and reapply or present. No, they don't have to reapply, just the. Just, the EDC, so we have to, just the EDC has to come back and... just EDC has a 
come and say, you know, it's been approved. Can you vote on it? They don't have, Bridgewater doesn't have to do anything. I, I know Bridgewater doesn't, but you're asking the EDC to come I back. Think she's saying that. Yeah, but John lives across the street. He doesn't mind. <laughs> Karen, you, you're saying. I'm always in favor rather, of simplifying and shortening meetings, Ray. You'd rather have a, a motion that um, triggers approval for Bridgewater if their legal analysis is. Exactly. Is there, a, I mean, we can vote on two motions. So I would make that motion. Okay. Is that motion seconded? Yes. Okay. So that second motion by Carrie, which was seconded by Mary, is that we would approve all four options with Bridgewater Child Care pending, um, pending legal. Uh, legal opinion. Legal opinion. Um, so we'll vote on Ray's motion first. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. 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 So that fails one to four. Uh, for Carrie's motion, all in favor say aye. 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 That motion carries. Oh, it's opposed. Stable. Abstain. Yep. Okay. Um, that motion carries four to zero to one. So, so pending pending official um, <coughs> opinion opinion from an attorney. Uh, that one is also approved. And we'll report that opinion back. Yes, please. So thank you so much for your time. Thank, thank you. you. Thank really you. appreciate thank you. it. Great thank study. You. Good work. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Very much. Great work. Really appreciate you guys. Uh, the next item would be to consider um, converting or replacing, if you will, the listers office with an assessor's office. Tim's here. Um, we met last week. Um, at the time, the from your office, the opinion was favorable. Um, is that still the case? Yeah, I, I just have questions about why you. Oh, of course. Do you want to uh, come up? Why? <laughs> <laughs> To involve a uh, an assessor when we're hiring them for the reassessor. Well, it would be your office doing the day to day, the same day to day operations under the title of assessor as opposed to under the title of lister. The, the benefit being um, that I see is, is, is more continuity with employees. You know, not having to run for re-election. Um, that makes that so, makes sense. So, I mean, from where I sit, it seems like a like a like a good idea. But um, as yeah. far as doing it now, it was well. I I think it makes sense to do it now, and you know, um, obviously, one you know we would keep the folks on is uh, is interim. Until we had a, a job description and a posting, and you're more than welcome to apply for the, for the position, mm -hmm. either one of you. Um, and both, or both. <laughs> you know, um, I just think it's. Um, I, I think it gives some stability. You're not training somebody new every year or two, right. and um, that definitely is an issue. And and it keeps you know it it, it could, could keep the list the. The office open every day, yeah. eight hours a day instead of four. Well, now it's a full time position. Well, well, it, the funding is full. If you take the funding that we're paying now, it equals out to a full time position, yes, or close to it. So you would just be hiring one person then? Correct. There's there's three ah. there's there's three part time listers right. positions. Mm -hmm. Right, but if you take the funding that that, that the three listers 
cost and the benefits, it comes out to pretty much the same dollar amount or close to it. Yeah, but you don't have, I mean, but the office may function better with two part-time. Assessors. Uh, two part-time assessors. As right. opposed okay, to one but, assessor. but, we, but still, you're still taking three salaries and benefits for three people and making it down to two people. Four or three. I mean, well, if you go with if you go with two assessors, now that is not listers. Right, but why would it not be three part-time listers? I mean, part-time assessors. Why would it have to be? It wouldn't have to be. I'm just saying. Well, I think if that's that, what it if it, if it's billeted it now <laughs> three. I, yeah. I think it seems like there's some flexibility with how you could go forward, and maybe that was a discussion. Yeah. It is a discussion that someone can have with Eric when he comes on board. But I've always thought it was a strange position to be elected, um, and I think it makes great sense to have it, you know, have it be an appointed uh, hired position. Oh, yeah. Roger has his hand up. Go ahead, Roger. Um. I, I'm sure you know a lot more, all of you know a lot more about the efficiencies and how this would work. Just from a citizen standpoint, I think it would be very useful if you could state flatly that there will be no financial implications to this that are adding to the budget. If they're subtracting from the budget, great. Um, but but I'd really like to see it be neutral. Um, yeah. and an assurance that it will not not be neutral or, right. or this, lowering the budget. Yeah, this Thank conversion is, is is not aimed at adding any position or adding any costs. Um, is this, um, is that legal that, that you don't have to do three? Yeah, it's, okay. it's variable. You okay. Do it any way you want. Okay. So, so it seems like more and more towns are going this route rather yeah. than having the elected listers. So I think it makes a lot of sense as well to try to have, you know, people, whether it's exist our existing listers or, or whatever, but people with experience rather than having to, you know, have an election where you don't quite know what experience level people have. Right. Yeah, I think, I think Woodstock's fortunate to have two qualified listers at this point. You know, so many towns that they don't have any. And that's why they, they're forced to hire a, yeah. an assessor because mm -hmm. no one wants to do the job. It's a very difficult job these days. Right. And so. that's, we only have to do too. And, you know, and we're not, we're certainly not making the decision to, right. to approve the change. We're just making the decision to, put on uh, to approve putting on the ballot. And, yeah. you know, to answer your original question of why now, it doesn't. Why I mean, not? doesn't have why? to be now, but it is, yeah. you know, it is now, so why not now? Well, <laughs> but but it's time, town meeting time. Yeah, it would be fine. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll make a motion to put the um, assessor article on the ballot. Yeah, so motion. Mm -hmm. by, a second. Get a sec second by Kerry. Um, there's no other discussion among the select board. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Uh, motion carries five to zero. Go ahead. Go. If oh, I can I, add, oh. I, oh, sorry. Okay, go, ahead. go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I think it, we really need to um, do some things either on the listserv and or the standard to try to educate people about why we're proposing Posing this because um, I I think a lot of people won't quite understand. Yeah, and when that it doesn't, question and that it doesn't is not a proposed increase. Correct. Um, yeah, thank you for that, Susan. Have a good night. Bye. Uh, so on page uh, sixty of the packet is the uh, kind of like goals and objectives. I have one change. One change. Okay. Uh, under physical infrastructure and public works, um, eliminating the trip hazards and the sidewalks with emphasis on the village business district. Uh, I would put in improve the infrastructure of the town and the village. Okay. 
in addition to what's there? No, well, or get rid of it. Get rid of the, you know, why would the sidewalks just in the village be a priority and the rest of the town is second rate? Well, we have from Two Rivers, there's a did a analysis on the condition of the sidewalks. Well, yeah, yeah, no, I know the but sidewalks are bad, but, but I, I don't, I don't think, the, I don't, the trustee, of course, the trustees. Yeah, trustees as, as, right. as their goal, we, we right. can have our own. Right. To it. But I, I think it should, I, I think it should be improve the infrastructure in the town. Village. So I everything think, else but, is pretty broad and that's so narrow. I mean, we have yeah. a crumbling road on College Hill. You know, we can we can list a lot yeah. of things if we're going right. to be specific. So it should just be a broad um statement about infrastructure and prioritizing. Right. What happens if the bridge collapses? Do we fix the bridge or fix the sidewalk? No, you get the sidewalk there. Okay. Keep the pedestrian path open. Okay. <laughs> But you know, I mean, it just, it, it just, it's too narrow. Yeah. I, I just see it as that's some guidelines they want to keep, and we also just want broad stroke right. infrastructure. Yeah. So, yeah. but and then I don't know what the 11 is in the next, into the last sentence. Oh, yeah. I, I think something. that's a typo. Yeah. I think that kind of takes care of that. I'll talk to I'll talk to Cena about. I don't think yeah. we need a motion. This is just a work document. Yeah. So All right. I'll talk to Cena about about those line items. That, that um, items. Yeah. Um, so sewer abatement requests for the Board of Sewer Commissions, Twenty River Street. As you know, I always vote against these because I think it's something that should be handled in a real estate closing where they're advised. Um, about sewer, and if their attorney hasn't, then it's their attorney's responsibility. So you know, and, it's and, my and, practice and, to not. And my question is, how did the notice that they were being fined and penalized get to the right address and not the sewer bills? Yep, <laughs> that's an age-old question. So, <laughs> um, um, yeah. We build sewer once a year. Yes. It was read like, oh, so this is two, right, two, two years. fiscal years. Yes. Right. I'm seeing it now. Yeah. So, man. Is, and there's no date in this letter. And oh, wait a minute. Robert's not. The liquid um, tax notice from January 3rd. So, I just don't know how. It went no, that so I, I'm not in favor of it, and, and he's not here to answer our questions, right? Right, so I make a motion not to accept the uh removing the fines and interest from the sewer bill. Or motion by Ray, second by Mary, um, for uh 20 River Street in opposition or. You know, to deny the request for abatement at 20 River Street. Yes. Yep. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, approval of minutes. I had a change, or at least, am I, um, on the air packs. It was my recollection that we did not approve taking it from Capital Reserve, that we said he doesn't need to, He's or, we authorized him to order them. He doesn't have to pay for them till July. And we talked about, um, you know, grants and ARPA and the excess funds from the building bond. And um, I think we specifically, his, his request was to take 50,000 from the Capital Reserve for the ambulance. My recollection was that we did not like that idea. So- yeah, I think it was more, yeah, we, it we, was broader. It was it was kind of take out the words of capital, capital reserve because it was essentially with a combination of fundings as right. available as right, terms. Yeah. So we can make that change. Right, because we definitely said from a combination of it would really just read from a combination of 
um, available, available funds, funds for your available tax. funds, right? And the yep. capital reserves and other. So that's that's an easy fix. So with that change, I would move um, that we adopt, accept the minutes of January third and January tenth. Yeah. Second. I'll second it. Second by Ray. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motions carry. And then. Is there a motion for adjournment if there's no other business to come before the board tonight? So moved. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. <laughs> Motions by Ray and Kiri. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, excellent. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.